the following is a presentation of Relentless Podcast Network. From its headquarters in beautiful Moline, Illinois, the home of strong opinions and marginal analysis, the newer Chicago Cubs, IVNV.com proudly presents the IVNV Podcast. Hello and welcome to the IVNV Podcast, which is part of Relentless Podcast Network. It's uh, Sunday, September 23rd, 2012. I am one of your co-hosts. My name is Corey, and I've got three other guys in this episode with me tonight. Hi, it's Andy. Hey, it's Jeremy. This is Kurt. If you're new to the podcast, thank you for finding us. Our site is ivmv.com, and we have blog posts um, pretty much almost never anymore on there. But I'm sure that when... (laughs) When we feel like writing the comes again, they'll be up there all the time. Um, uh, when we're broadcasting this recording live, you can watch it on our site. Just click on the live broadcast button or go to ivmb.com forward slash live. And we're uh, trying to do these broadcasts on Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. If you do want to watch our live broadcast, follow us on our social network accounts and we'll keep you updated on there. Um, and you can also see the archived videos on uh, Relentless Podcast Network YouTube channel. You can go to ivmb.com forward slash YouTube. If you're watching live, we have a game, We have a chat on the live broadcast page now. I don't know if you saw that, Kurt. So you don't have to go to the game chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm headed that way. An hour ago. So um, you can uh, get in there and uh, communicate with us through Kurt, and uh, Kurt will be sure to chime in when there's something witty said or uh, a profound statement. <laughs> you can like us on Facebook. That's a good place to interact with us and our listeners and talk about the Cubs, and that's where we post the photos for our caption contest. We do one of those a week, and we'll pick a winner for this week's photo at the end of the episode. And this week, the winner will be awarded the DVD box set that I have right here. Uh, the essential games of the Chicago Cubs, and uh, yeah, so we'll do that later. And also, uh, usually, we ask for topic suggestions uh, or questions from the listeners on our Facebook page, and we did that this week, and we'll get to those topics later in the episode. Speaking of our Facebook page, Jeremy, do you see that some of our listeners uh, shot down your theory uh, about Andre Dawson and the State Farm commercial? I did, and I'll never believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though uh, Dawson's talked about it, you just don't buy it, huh? Uh, for some reason, he's lying. I, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Have you noticed in that commercial that because it's a national commercial, they had to put Kerry Wood's last name on his jacket? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and on, uh, other than our Facebook page, you can follow us on Twitter, and our handle is at ABNB. If you'd like to help support this podcast and you shop on Amazon, uh, you can go to our website, ivmv.com, and, and uh, click on the Amazon link. Oh, and that reminds me. You can go to ivmv.com forward slash Amazon, and uh, by doing this, we receive a kickback from Amazon, and it's free for you, and it helps us keep things going. Uh, in the last episode, we discussed the fact that uh, we were having trouble staying interested uh, enough to watch as many games as we typically do during the season, and that my mom is still watching all these games, and she didn't know that it was okay to stop watching until <laughs> she heard us talking about it. And uh, she sent me an email uh, with an explanation of why she's watching, and I don't, I don't think she planned on me reading it, but I'm going to. Too bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it says, in reference uh, to the subject of David DeJesus, it may be lost on you guys, but yes, females do find him very pleasing to the eyes. <laughs> it is possible that this is a motivating factor for several females to still watch games. Wow. So there's that. Uh, and then she said, uh, I know 
I know they have nothing to really celebrate over, but I do enjoy the joy and excitement on the faces of some of the young younger players. They have things like little leagues at times. Bottom line, when a team is losing hopelessly, you'll never see uh, moms in the crowd heading for their cars. They stay even if they don't like baseball and keep cheering on their boys until it is finished. You can always find something that they've done right, and if they uh, do have a great play, you wouldn't want to miss their grins. They may be finishing at the bottom of the heap, but you know their mothers are proud of them. So I guess, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a motherly instinct that she has with those guys, I guess. I don't. So the, uh, does that mean the Cubs are a team only a mother could love? <laughs> <laughs> and there's the episode title. <laughs> I don't usually think about Carlos Marmol's mom. <laughs> Down on the goat farm. I bet she is taking care of the ranch right now, or at least helping. Yeah. So I don't know. I thought that was a good explanation, and it's valid. I think. I think Um, I'll go as David De Jesus for Halloween. (laughs) (laughs) You you kind of have the facial hair for it, I think. Uh, I do. I don't think I'm nearly as attractive, but I'll, <laughs> I'll let the other people decide that. <laughs> yeah, we should figure out which cub we look like, each look like the most, and then that'll be. I'd have to go with. I'll drop my name as uh, I'll go with Mather because of height. <laughs> and then you could get her like a ridiculous curly, like blonde <laughs> wig thing. <laughs> I think uh, if we're counting former cubs, I could go as Matt Merton. You Andy, go. you're Anthony Rizzo all the way. Yeah. Rizzo? That'd be yeah. easy, and then I could just do his batting stance all night. Yeah. <laughs> Lazily hold the bat. <laughs> yeah. um, More like no sign language now. Yeah, I'm trying to get my kids out of here. <laughs> 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 They're over-talking into microphones that aren't turned on, so it's distracting me. Sorry. Um... So there haven't obviously have not been many positives to take out of this 2012 season, and who would have thought uh, this April that uh, Alfonso Soriano would probably have the best season in the lineup? Uh, he broke his career high RBI total uh, with 105, and Andy has 31 uh, home runs, and that's the first time he's hit that mark since 2007, his first season with the Cubs. He's averaged 78 RBIs a season. Uh, with the Cubs, so 104, I think, is a pretty impressive uh, improvement at this stage of his career. So I think, obviously, his his performance, both offensively and defensively, have come as a surprise to, I, I, w- I would venture that every single Cubs fan in the world. You know, what's, what's sad about that is no Cubs fan in the world wants him on the team anyway, regardless <laughs> yeah. of that. I, mean, I, I kind of feel bad for the guy. He's had a really good year, like you said, and everyone just wants to see him traded. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point because um, I don't know. I mean, shouldn't – I mean, the Cubs have already paid for him. They're not going to get very much in return. Right. If if he's playing like this at this point in his career, I mean, you might as well keep him, I guess. Yeah, just write it. I mean, unless we have some superstar phenom to, to throw in left field, you know, you might as well write out the contract. I don't think his league's going to hold up an entire season, another entire season, because um, I think he's in pain, and it's pretty much looks like it's going to buckle at any minute. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I agree for the most part that we don't have anything else better, but um, but I don't know if he's going to hold up. I'm sure yeah. he's going to say in the off season that he's going to steal more bases next year, though. <laughs> I bet there are like some AL teams out there regretting they didn't try to push for him uh, after the around the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people thought that he would kind of fall off, or you know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I find it somewhat surprising that the Cubs weren't able to ditch him. At the end of the season, I mean, he was obviously going to clear waivers. The Cubs are going to eat a ton of contract, if almost mm-hmm. all of it. But I don't know. I, I honestly think the Cubs might as well keep him at this point. Um, you know, it's pretty unlikely he'll put up similar numbers next year. Like I said, Kurt injuries 
uh, you know, still looming and, you know, whether or not he can physically handle it. But I think he's proven he's still got some pop uh, in his bat. He can drive in runs. So, you know, those runs amount to wins. And, well, I think the Ricketts and Epstein plans to do everything that helps the team uh, in the future. I think that they don't want this team to get any worse next season. You know, they still need to sell tickets, and I think they need to have somewhat of an incremental improvement to keep the cash flow fans on board. That's who buys the tickets. So I, I you have to hope for another season like you had. Otherwise, you know, they'd probably be pretty easily uh, touching that, that record that we've been avoiding all season. Well, man, if he just had a couple more hitters around him in the lineup in the pitching rotation we even had at the beginning of the season, you know, the Cubs could be in a position like the the Brewers this year or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, are you saying they go out and buy some free agents that could – or are you just saying hypothetically? Hypothetically. Oh, Yeah. Well, and kind of like you said, I don't know, I think you said, Jeremy, you know, um, it's not like Toriano is stopping some, like, phenom youngster from coming up right now. There's no replacement waiting in the wings in Iowa <laughs> right now. And, you know, they, they called up the best Iowa outfielder, Brett Jackson, and look at his struggles. So, I don't know. I can't see them ditching uh, Soriano after a 105 or 110 RBI season for James Aducci. <laughs> well, I mean, you're down to the end now, the end of the contract. So, right. like I said, you might as well ride out next season. Maybe a, a trade deadline move. Mm-hmm. And I do wonder where Soriano's head is and all this because he clearly doesn't have a ton of years left. Um, so if he's saying, hey, maybe at the end of this contract, that might be close to the end for me. So does he try to at least um, put out that he's ready to move to another team, unlike he did this year where he was kind of making fun of some teams like San Francisco. And, um, you know, does he put out there that he wants to go somewhere to try to win, or does he just ride it out because he doesn't really care? You know? This is his, uh, his Hall of Fame push right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think the Cubs really need to push to move him in the off season instead of before the trade deadline next year. So, um, you know, they he's still on coming off this really good season. There's a chance he could have a terrible season up until the trade deadline next year. So I'd like to see him get, you know, something out of him for the but future. But don't you think that if they do that, like this is definitely a worse team next year? Oh, certainly it is. I mean, you're obviously fewer runs scored. Um, right, but he's not part of the picture for, you know, you know, part of the grand scheme or the, you know, the long-term plans. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, Andy, but I, I think it would be different if that meant they were going to get more in return to help them with their big picture, but they're not going to get anything in return for them. No. So I don't know. I mean, I, I do see what you're saying, but I disagree with you. You don't think they're gonna, they can get a prospect or two? I don't think so. I don't know. I mean... I think they could probably give give up very much. Yeah, nobody's going to give up a lot, but I mean. You would think if it was feasible, they would have done it this year. You know, a team like, uh, I think of Tampa Bay, how how good he would look in that lineup right now with uh, their offensive struggles. I just, you know, the other teams aren't stupid. I mean, they know the, the history behind him and how unlikely it is that this will happen again next year. I mean, the guy had dirt on his jersey today, guys. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> he had dirt all that's, over his chest. It was amazing. It's worth about two of his 19 mil right there. Yeah. And I don't know why we're talking about the American League. I mean, if you listen to Bob Brimley, he's a borderline gold glover out there now. So <laughs> he needs to stay in the NL. Yeah, yeah. I just think, like, you know, the Cubs aren't selling tickets uh, with uh, Soriano in the lineup to us, people like us. But I think there are people out there still that, that you know, he might be somewhat enticing to go to Wrigley Field and watch the Cubs. And I, I don't think they can 
you know, we've kind of talked about the idea of like, okay, well, we know what the long term plan is, but don't you need like a few little nuggets in there to kind of keep people interested? Maybe that's what Soriano is. He's just a little nugget of, hey, casual fan, at least you know one guy in the lineup or, you know, you know, Castro and Soriano. And if I think if you get rid of him, I don't know. Don't you think they can get those nuggets, though, and via off-season signings? They can have plenty of nuggets that no. are a little bit lower priced, and then they still have Garza. And they'll have a <laughs> nice little Garza. pile of nuggets. Well, well yeah, the, the type of players you're going to go for in the off-season, I think, are going to be the David DeJesus types. The Paul Mahalam, David DeJesus right. types. And, I mean, I, I, don't, I just don't think those, those are difficult guys to get excited about. Well, unless you're your mom. <laughs> right. My mom would buy tickets to see David Hayes. Or Man, some kid is very unhappy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, well, I guess we can move on. I mean, I, I don't know. Did you want to defend yourself any more there, Andy? About moving Soriano in the off season? Yeah. I mean, I think we already pretty much covered it just as long, you know, I mean, move him if you can get something worthwhile out of it. Jeremy said that, made a good point in saying that the Cubs probably would have done so if they could have. So hang on to him if you're, you know, you're not going to get anything good and continue to sell those tickets, make money, get some revenue, and that way we can spend it in the future. Yeah, and I think if he does stay next year, I could, I would put a lot of money on the fact that um, he won't do well next year. And it could be, you know, if he has a bad April and May, he get pretty ugly. I mean, people don't like him during this season. <laughs> He's played really well. So, I don't know. What an ugly season, and it could, it could get uh, pretty brutal, I think. Can I uh, ask a question here about or about Marmol? Uh, what do you think is the possibility of, of him being traded in the offseason? Uh has he done enough to have a team? I I think it's been a an incline of his season rather than a decline. He start he started off really rough, and I think he's improved. But obviously, he's not the uh, Carlos Marmol that that he was. But I, I do think he has some value. Definitely, he's. I mean, he's only had twenty three save opportunities this season, but. He's only blown three saves, and he has a three three point four four ERA. I'm sorry, a three point six one ERA. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't really know like what the uh, closers market is right <laughs> now. I guess. I, I suppose that would be a factor. But there are. All, it seems like there are always teams looking for one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, if you look at Milwaukee with, with K-Rod and the uh, traditional closer in the setup role, I mean, he can, he can fill that, that role also. There's nothing saying he has to be a closer on another team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, lately we've been checking in with uh, Brett Jackson and Josh Fitters on their progress. And... Uh, Wow, <laughs> things are not going well for these guys. Uh, Brett Jackson, he's he's o uh, for thirteen since coming back from banging into the wall, and his batting average has dropped to one sixty eight. But the good news is <laughs> that he's uh, <laughs> the good news is that he's uh, struck out four times in that stretch. So four out of thirteen is actually an improvement. So we're seeing. We're seeing <laughs> Maybe there's light at the end of this tunnel. <laughs> and I think we've, um, you know, we, we have all season, off season to speculate on what the future holds for these two guys, but I think it's worth mentioning uh, what they're doing or what they're not doing right now to wrap up the season. And Vitters, he's batting 200 in his last 10 games, so uh, that's pretty damn good compared to all of the other numbers that they, <laughs> those two have put up this year. <laughs> they just need, those two guys need the season to end now and then it'll be <laughs> nice to, nice for them to come back in spring training and kind of get a reset. Yeah. 
Yeah, man, it sure would have. I think that it would have made uh, you know some people that are maybe a little skeptical of their the approach, the long term approach that the Cubs have right now. I think that if if those two would have done well, I think it prob- maybe would have made more people uh, comfortable with the situation. But I think it just goes to show that you know it's not all these prospects are going to work out as planned. You know, have you guys become less comfortable with the situation now that we have seen these guys play at the major league level? I would uh, say, yay, generally yes, because <laughs> uh, it's. I mean, they're definitely they're stocking up on pitching for the most part, and you know, we know there's some good names in on the infield too in the minors, but um, I don't know. I worry. I I wonder if Theo and Jed are skeptical too, but they're just throwing them out there to say, all right, prove yourself. Um, and then they'll go from there based on performance. So you think that uh, these two prospects coming up and not doing particularly well made you a little bit more nervous about maybe the Almoras and Solaires? And... Yeah. Well, I guess I'm, I think Jackson's going to be a pretty good major league outfielder. I don't think he's a future superstar. Uh, I'm kind of, I don't know, Jerry's still out on Vitters. I don't think he's going to pull it off um, because he's got too much to work on. So, I don't know. You you might get uh, a pretty decent outfielder out of the deal uh, with Jackson, but I don't know. I, he, I don't think he's a superstar. I think he's just a pretty good everyday guy. Yeah. And I think at the beginning of the season, we took some comfort in the fact that, oh, we have Brett Jackson down at, you know, down in the minors, and and uh, we got all these good prospects, and we start. It, it makes you a little bit nervous to see some of the highly touted prospects come up and struggle to this extent. So, well, well, don't forget that Anthony Rizzo was one of those guys as well. I mean, mm-hmm. all all Cub fans were were pining for him to be brought up, and he he's done really well. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I think everyone should be excited about about Rizzo and what he's done. I guess I put him in a diff- little bit of a different ballpark because uh, uh, Hoyer and Epstein got him, like he's their guy, uh, and I think they've sort of proven that he's worked out well, but I think with uh, Jackson and uh, Vitters and others, they're kind of saying, well, you know, this, these guys are from the, the old regime, and you know, we'll, we'll go with them if they're good, but if not, then good luck. <laughs> you know, yeah. So it's I- sort of trial by fire, and they haven't held up very well. Yeah, I agree with that totally. I was I was going to mention that also that they're not uh, Theo Hoyer Hoyer guys. So mm-hmm. I, I'm not worried. I'm really not worried at all. And let's not forget that we we still have deep pockets and we still have the ability to to go out and buy those free agents. So I mean, it, the way it looks, uh, it's probably unlikely that bidders is is going to do anything. I'm I'm not. Uh, I've not given up on Jax yet, but we'll see. I guess I would. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm a little more worried, I think, than than Jeremy kind of just said that he was because even though they've got deep pockets, you know, you're a number one elite starter is a twenty million a year contract um, plus who knows what you know. You've got a lot of holes to fill, and I think to try to fill it with with big contracts is going to be tough. Um, so even though they've cut their payroll extensively, you know, you drop a few of those in there and you get a couple Sorianos and all of a sudden you're right back up to 100 and whatever they were at the, the peak, 150 million or something. Yeah, I think you would just hope that Epstein and Hoyer would be a little uh, better at identifying talent than Jim Hendry was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so you just kind of hope that you get a little, you know, more Rizzo's out of the system than you do Vitter's. Right. Going well, forward. Uh, Theo actually alluded to uh, 2013 uh, in a roundabout way, being a lot like 2012. And, and I think we know that going into it, the next year will probably be a tough year also. Yeah. Well, this, I would... Oh, go ahead, Jeremy. I'm sorry, Corey. It's not a uh, one-year project. This is no. definitely I would, at least three years if not four. Yeah, and and I think that um, I think it'll probably 
I think by 2014, the pieces will maybe start falling into place. Um, but I don't know. I, I think I just, I hope that next year is somewhat of an improvement. You know, even if it's like the little pieces start pulling, like molding together well, you know, there's got to be something to take away. It's got to be better than this year. <laughs> well, they're definitely going to have to do a lot of work on the starting rotation. Yeah. Yeah. Then to make it better, I think you could you could make yourself um, better the the quickest uh, by improving that rotation. But don't you see it being Holland guys to start off the season? Like that's who they're going to go out and get. Yeah, I think so. Um, but you know the. They need at least two more, you know, pretty good guys. So who knows? Maybe they go get um, a, a really good starter and then another mediocre starter, and then you've got a decent staff. Yeah. Craig. But the pitching was good at, in this season. That's the scary yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. It got better. I mean, it was kind of shaky at first, though. Well, Dempster sure started off hot. Yeah. I don't know. It. it yeah, I, I think we know that next year is not going to be a drastic improvement. I just hope to kind of see maybe I guess what I'm looking for is like um, Castro playing defense better and you know just certain maybe a little more uh, from the catcher position and a bullpen that kind of holds it together a little bit more and you know maybe, maybe it's just individual things that we'll be able to take away from it. Good I baseball. don't see them yeah, I don't see them doing nothing. I think, I think that they're going to do something that's going to surprise us. I don't know what that is or what spot that is, but I can't see them going through the whole off season and putting the same team on the field. Um, yeah. I think they'll do something that's a little bit shocking, and I, I say that because of, you know, how aggressively they went after Solaire and landed him, and um, you know, with the draft picks. So I, I, I don't know. I think they're going to do some work. Right. I mean, they're yeah. There could be a Rizzo type out there that they could acquire in a trade somehow or something like that. And like you said, they got to sell tickets and they got to, I don't know, so they got to do something novel for the fans. I mean, the fans aren't going to want to see the same thing. Yeah. And maybe maybe what I'm looking for too is some improvements in the, uh, you know, through our coaching and, and management, you know, I, I mean, I don't think they're doing a bad job now. They don't have a whole lot to work with. But maybe if Brett Jackson comes out and plays, you know, really well next year, you know, it's little things like that I, I think we'll be able to uh, maybe, I don't know, tide us over until 2014, 2015, you know, until the pieces that they've, you know, like Solaire and Almora and those pieces are are coming up and, getting at least to Iowa and maybe, you know, working their way up. Going to Kane County. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of Kane County, um, we've been uh, in, uh, I hope it, like what I said in that last conversation, I didn't repeat myself because I was away from. <laughs> no, you're fine. For a few minutes. I don't know if you guys could tell, but my daughters were around the corner singing the Strawberry Shortcake song at the top of their lungs, so I'm sorry if anybody heard that. <laughs> it's obviously, uh, all four of us are our dads, so kids uh, kids are going to make their appearances on this podcast, I think. Um, so, yeah, you mentioned Kane County, Andy. Uh, we've been talking about the changes in the Midwest League uh, the last couple episodes, and then this week, uh, everyone got the official word that the Cubs are, in fact, moving their affiliate to Kane County. And the Cardinals moved from the Quad Cities down to Peoria. So the Peoria Chiefs are back with the Cardinals. And, Jeremy, on the last episode, uh, you were hoping that, too, the Chiefs went with out of the, uh, the options that they had. Yeah, definitely not for uh, personal reasons, but I think it's good, good for Chiefs baseball and uh, good to keep baseball in Peoria. I mentioned uh, there's been a lot of things out in the local media and the local radio here about all the dealings there. And uh, according like what, to... Like what kind of stuff? Well, according to uh, the local paper writer, uh, the 
owner of the Chiefs did have to apologize to uh, the Cardinal organization. Now mm -hmm. that's, you know, where, if that's legit or not. I mean, it was published in print, so. Was that Kevin Capey that said that? Uh, I believe so. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say that for sure because I'm not, uh, I think he does all the writing for the Chiefs, so it had, most likely it was him, but. Um, so he basically had to mend some fences before the Cardinals would come back. Yeah, and I knew that things that the Chiefs Cardinals relationship wasn't ideal before, or I guess maybe it wasn't everything the Chiefs hoped it could be. Right. Apparently, they had to assure them also that it was a this was a long term thing. And they actually signed a four year deal, which in minor league baseball it's generally two year agreements, I guess. So, um, one of the other things was there was some talk about if there were, if this was done before everything was official with the Cubs and because it came out on immediately, like early in the morning the next day. So, you know, that, that's, that's just, I'm sure just general baseball stuff. I'm sure that happens all the time, but uh, the Peoria media has to find something to talk about, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I will still go to Chiefs games, but I, I will not go as frequently, most likely. But uh, I, I'm just glad that they will continue to have baseball in the area that uh, a lot of fans will want to see. There yeah. are a lot of Cardinal fans in Peoria area, so yeah. Embrace and the, yeah. Chief as a uh, fire chief and go with the red. Switch from blue to red. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, it makes a lot of sense for these teams to have the affiliate closer, geographically closer to the big league club. And uh, it's tough to see, uh, see that go for us, you know, because it was nice to drive down there and see Cubs prospects. But. It'll make it a little bit easier for me now to cheer for the Bandits since I know they're not going to be Cardinals down the road. Yeah, the uh, River Bandits reportedly have their affiliation narrowed down to the Astros, Angels, and A's. So I guess they know what it'll, it's going to start with an A. <laughs> they can start their designs. Um, but geographically, none of those teams would really benefit the River Bandits. Um and we mentioned them because we are technically based out of the Quad Cities, so I don't know. Either either way, I'll, I'll only go to the Quad Cities or Peoria probably now that when King County is in town. That was also something that was uh, mentioned in the local media. Uh, there was a lot of people upset by this. A lot of people really happy, obviously Cardinal fans, and a lot of people upset, but uh, one of the local sportscasters mentioned make this a big rivalry, you know, when, when Kane County comes to town, I mean, it, it can, it can spice up minor league baseball a little bit. You know? mm -hmm. So whether or not that happens, I, I don't know, but yeah. If you remember the angels were in Peoria for several years, uh, way back in the day, probably the, what was that? The late eighties, maybe. Yeah, because they, they were with the Quad City Quad Cities for a while, either before or after that. Also, it would have been the nineties. Was it yeah. the 90s? Quad Cities? We had the Quad wow. City Angels. I would like to see a return to that. Actually, yeah, I would love to see the Angels go there. I don't really have much of a desire to see the Astros <laughs> single A. <laughs> <laughs> They'd probably can, be amazing. I, <laughs> yeah. I can remember seeing uh, Wally Joyner playing for the uh, California Angels farm team in Peoria and winning the Midwest League MVP there. Huh, yeah, so that was... must have been before before they went to the Cubs. Yeah, I want to say it was, gosh, that was probably... Like 83 or... Yeah, mid-80s probably. Yeah. Huh. Well, um, I don't know. I really liked going down to the Chiefs. Uh, games and I enjoyed working with Nathan Beliba and the rest of the chief staff over the last three years. So, you know, thanks to all of them for being supportive of, of us uh, illegitimate media. <laughs> so, um, the uh, the NL Central has been clinched by the Reds, and I'm hoping for a collapse 
Anthony and LDS. <laughs> um, although I have to admit, I think Reds Cardinals series could be really fun to watch, considering the history those teams have with each other. Oh yeah, that's true. I didn't really think about that, but I guarantee Brandon Phillips will do something stupid to trigger an incident. Yeah, I w- I would like to watch. I mean. The way it's at right now, they're, I mean, other than maybe slightly paying attention to the Orioles, there's not very much that, you know, is going to capture my interest this postseason. But I think I would definitely watch Reds Cardinals. Yeah, I'd like to see at least Sean Marshall pitch well in the playoffs for the Reds. I mean, he's the only Red player that I hope to be successful, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Branson Arroyo gets shellacked. Yeah, it, and he will. <laughs> do you find you guys? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit getting off that topic, but um, do you, will you find yourself rooting against the Nationals given the recent uh, battle? I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better word, between the Cubs and the Nationals and the fight stuff. I think it kind of depends who they play for me. Like, I'm not going to care too much. Yeah. Yeah, I, it depends. I think if, yeah, man, I don't know. I have a hard time rooting for, there's only a couple of teams that I will root for, and I just have a really hard time rooting for any other team. So, yeah, you turn around too. and wag your finger at the Expos hat really quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I turn it around. <laughs> if they were still the Expos, I might root for them. Oh, yeah, I could, I could see doing that. I just want to yeah, say which is kind of why. Just go I, was ahead, say, oh, I was just gonna say that's kind of like why I, would, I guess I would root for the Orioles. Mm-hmm. You know that same, same thing. And I guess yeah, if they were the Expos and maybe uh, hadn't, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I just want to see somebody win that is not the Yankees or, you know, not. Cardinals. The Cardinals, somebody that, that hasn't been there. And I don't want to see Dusty Baker and the Reds do it. <laughs> so no. we have a long list of teams we don't want to see win. The White Sox, <laughs> Cardinals, Yankees, mm-hmm. Reds. Okay, so we're really pulling <laughs> we're really pulling for the Orioles. <laughs> Orioles, come on guys. <laughs> I would I could even root for uh the Braves, even though I don't like the Braves at all and the Chipper Jones love fest would make me barf, but um for the Giants, I can handle the Giants. Yeah, I don't mind them. Well, we let's uh, check in with some former Cubs uh, that were in Cubs uniforms earlier this season, but are now in playoff races. Ryan Dempster and Soto are now with the Rangers, and they're leading the AL West by four games. Yeah, and um, having Dempster certainly hasn't hurt the Rangers. Um, He's gone six and two, uh, so kind of continuing his. He was pitching well with the Cubs, and he's continued to pitch pretty well for the Rangers. His ERA is four point seven zero with the Rangers, which is pretty shockingly different than how he was doing with the Cubs. He pitched a two point two five ERA with the Cubs, so that's a little bit different. But he's been doing enough apparently to win games, and that's what matters, I guess. Well, he finally has run support. Yeah, he finally has run support, so that's probably the biggest difference. And uh, so uh, he's doing well, and uh, they'll continue to lean on him going forward in the playoffs. And uh, Soto on the uh, Soto also, you guys are going to be surprised, but I mean, he was hitting 199 with the Cubs, and he's really raised that thing up um, a ton to uh, 213. <laughs> so I figure you guys would be pretty impressed by that. Um, but uh, he has played 40 games with the Rangers and has 22 RBIs. He played 52 games with the Cubs and only had 14 RBIs. So he's being a little bit more productive. Um, hit almost as many homers for the Rangers already as he did with the Cubs. So I don't know. He's doing. He's being himself. He's being Soto. Yeah. Um. And then uh, Paul Mahalam and Reed Johnson, they were traded to the Braves, and they're currently in possession of the first wild card spot in the National League. Sorry, just got back on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, for those not watching the video, missed uh, 
<laughs> I spilled my headphones. Um, all right. Uh, just because I missed that last part, we're just giving up. You just want to update, right? That's me. Sure. Right? Yeah. All right. So Reed Johnson has played uh, 34 games with the um, with the Braves and started 17 of them. So he's gotten a fair amount of starts. He doesn't have any home runs. Does have four RBI and is hitting 284. So he's basically kind of maintained his batting average. Um, and uh, but he isn't, you know, hitting for power. Doesn't have a ton of RBI. But I think he will be useful for them uh, going into the playoffs, just to have that guy on the bench that can help him out uh, in a pinch hitting situation. So I think. Pitch, pinch hitting is magnified in the playoffs, so he's going to be pretty valuable for them. Um, Mahal, um, he started. Defense, you know. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Well, I was just saying his defense. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be valuable in the playoffs. Right. Um, off the bench, mostly. I don't see him starting a ton of games. No. Um, but probably will get some. Um, and then Mahalm has started nine games with the uh, Braves, and he's four and five uh, with a 4.09 ERA. Um, he did kind of, I think, surprise some folks because the second game out with the Braves, he had a complete game shutout. Um, and he has pitched pretty well. Um, he hasn't got a ton of run support from them. Um, he, in the five losses, he's only had uh, eight runs of support. Huh. Um, and actually, I don't even know if that's, entirely accurate because I should say the Braves scored eight runs in the games that he lost because I don't know how many of those may have been scored after he left. But So he isn't getting a ton of uh, run support, but again, I think Mahomes kind of held pace with his uh, Cubs performance, and he's pitching pretty well, and again, he'll be a good lefty for him uh, in the playoffs. So not a whole lot changed there, no huge improvement and no drop-off for either of those guys. And then um, Jeff Baker, he was traded to the Tigers, and he is now uh, with the Braves, too. Uh, so, Jeremy, yeah. do you want to talk about? Yeah. I he, didn't know if you were still there. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Baker has played in 10 games with the Braves, um, only five at-bats, one hit, uh, one RBI, which comes out to a 200 batting average. Uh, obviously, they're not uh, using him a lot. Uh, he's most likely uh, a pinch hitter against left-handers. And he's never had more than 299 at-bats in a season his entire career, so he's just that type of guy that uh, is, is a pinch hitter and a role player. But I can't say I've seen him make an appearance with the Braves. Yeah, now you went to uh, – you saw Reed Johnson play. Was it his first game with the Braves? Were yeah. you down there? Yeah, I did. We went on vacation to Atlanta and uh, went to a game that was Reed's first game. So, yeah, were, you, I was, were you wearing Cubs gear? I was. That's pretty much my entire wardrobe. I don't I don't really have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was it was uh, kind of odd actually to see him in another uniform. I'd be accustomed to him as a Cub. Yeah, he's one of the guys I think Cub fans like. You know, a scrappy player. But, he'll probably be yep. back next year. Yeah, he'll probably be our starting uh, left fielder <laughs> when they trade Soriano. So. Cubs fans like Johnson, so. <laughs> yeah. That's true. yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at some listener-submitted top topics and questions. Uh, Bob from the U.K., he suggests we talk about Doctor Who, the new series. Oh, isn't that one of your other Relentless Podcast Network podcasts? No, no. I mean, shouldn't it be? A Doctor Who podcast? Yeah. That would be kind of fun. Bob posted some photos on his uh, Facebook page yesterday from the Doctor Who shop and. I was salivating. <laughs> I've never seen the program. I, no, I found this. I found uh, the store online, so I spent quite a bit of time browsing through their merchandise. <laughs> so, uh, to answer Bob's question on the new series, um, I'm pretty new to Doctor Who. I've 
been into it for about a year, but I like the new season. It feels kind of dark and ominous, and I think it's you know something's going to happen to the ponds. But anyway, that's that's for Bob. I don't know. So you guys don't watch it at all? No. You don't? no. I've seen one episode, and I... is that one of those? Is it HBO or Showtime that does that? It's BBC. Ah, uh, BBC. I've never never seen it myself. With that being said, I'd like to revisit it, like because I've talked to you enough about it and realized maybe my sample size wasn't big enough. But yeah, Connie made fun of me for months <laughs> That's about what she liking often it, says. and so. now she's maybe more on it than I am. But I don't know. The Doctor's kind of like a goofy kind of. I mean, it, it's really interesting show, but I think you know in other seasons or series, as they call it. Um, the doctor's kind of like goofy and whimsical, and I kind of like this new dark feel. But I hope that things lighten up when this new companion is introduced. But, all right, enough of that. <laughs> Bob and probably nobody else. <laughs> um, Brenton, he says, "How about best ballpark food?" I recently went to a minor league game in East St. Louis, uh, home of the Grizzlies. I didn't even. I've never even heard of them. I wonder what that is. Have you guys ever heard of the Grizzlies in East St. Louis? No. Just the NBA team, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and anyways, he said they had a Krispy Kreme burger, and it was a bacon cheeseburger, and for a bun they cut a donut in half. He said oh it was the God. best burger ever. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jeremy, you've been to a, lot, a ton of different ballparks. What do you have to say about this best ballpark food? Wow. Uh, man. Uh, Cincinnati had had some odd uh, odd things, especially with their adult beverages. Uh, you could buy a, a coconut with a player's face on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was like someone had drawn it on there, like a five year old. It looked like, but uh, man, I I don't know. I've I can tell you what's disappointed me. Um, the Dodger dog. Yeah, uh, I was really excited when I went to the L.A. Dodgers game for that, and that was like a a pencil size hot dog, like two pencils put together. It was like <laughs> half an inch in diameter. You know, I was pretty disappointed. The Dodger dog tasted but, like chewing on a pencil. Yeah. Uh, I Milwaukee. think we can all agree it's not the Cubs, right? As far as the ballpark food. No, no, it's not. But uh, you Milwaukee mean has some good food. Yeah, it's not the best. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I personally, I I really like the Dags Pizza at Wrigley. Yeah, so, the, the mean, deep dish Dags is good. But yeah. sorry, yeah. go. Ahead. What were you saying about Milwaukee? Uh, they had a uh, nice variety, also, and actually, uh, Corey's second favorite team, uh, Anaheim. I thought they had a very good uh, menu there. They they actually. Uh, vendors would bring uh, like different. I don't know what, if it was Papa John's or some some pizza joint that they had inside there. You could get that uh, brought to your seats. And didn't they have a Hooters in there? They might. I mean, Angel Stadium is kind of one of those places that you could probably find sushi if you wanted. Yeah. You know, they have all. I think there's Ruby's in there, and I don't know. I that's where I think I had the best ballpark food and I'm a vegetarian so coming that's kind of coming from a different angle so supposedly Dodger Stadium has a veggie dog but I couldn't find it and that was when I was getting <laughs> verbally <laughs> assaulted <laughs> and physically assaulted <laughs> I was a little distracted for my own safety <laughs> but um, Angel Stadium I, last time I was there um, I went to uh, the Panda Express stand and I got a huge meal for like eight bucks. It was like rice, two sides, spring rolls, soda, all that. So I don't know. That, that was probably the best, you know, from the vegetarian angle. That was the best ballpark food I had. Atlanta had a uh, large menu, also a lot of different uh, ethnic style foods that aren't uh, traditional, you know, hot dogs and pretzels and nachos, the things that you'll mostly find at Wrigley. But you know, I'm I'm a I'm a hot dog guy. I go to a, a baseball game, uh, give me a hot dog, and I'm in a beer, and I'm pretty happy. So 
Me too. Most of the, most of the Dodger dog. Yeah, that that was disappointing. That was well, when I went to Dodger Stadium with my brother, he said the same thing. He was kind of disappointed in the Dodger dog. But I like the candied nuts at the Bandits games. Have you guys had those? <laughs> no. Candied nuts? Yeah, <laughs> like sugar-coated whatever kind of nut you want. <laughs> I've, never, I've never had those. Oh, sugar-coated nuts. Try it out sometime. <laughs> it's, it's down the left field side. That's a topic, though. That would have been a good off-season topic, but, you know, for a good topic for, like, uh, February when you're really just dying for some baseball and it makes you think about sitting at the ballpark and eating food. All the sensory details of sitting in a ballpark. Right. Um, and Michael, he uh, says, upcoming battle of the Titans, Rockies versus Cubs. I'm going to a game. What should I be looking for? Tyler Colvin. <laughs> My answer is what you should be looking for is the nearest beer vendor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You're going to have to really try to just enjoy the, the game of baseball, I think. <laughs> Read a couple of W.P. Kinsella books and stories before you go. <laughs> like, watch Field of Dreams and read The Thrill of the Grass, and that'll get you pumped up for it. Did anybody see uh, Rob Schneider do the seventh inning stretch the other day? No. no. Yeah, actually, I watched that game, and that was an excellent uh, seventh inning stretch. I was really impressed. He put his own little spin on it. It was really good. Let's see if I can find that online. And then I thought Corey would be excited about Friday night's game against the Cardinals. They got a walk-off win and celebrated on the field. Hmm. Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's what my mom was talking about, just that youthful enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, let's take a break. Um... But before we do, if you're in the market to celebrate the Bears' victory today by purchasing purchasing a shirt or hoodie, check out ChiTownClothing.com. Chi- Chi- they have some unique designs uh, over there that you won't find in any, any of the retail stores. And they have designs for all the Chicago teams, uh, Bears, Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, White Sox, whatever. So head over to Chi-Town Clothing and check their stuff out. And when you purchase something, tell them that you heard about them uh, from the IPNP podcast. All right, when we come back, Kurt will give us a scary stat of the week. And then we will pick a winner for this week's photo caption contest. So we will be right back. We'd like to thank you for listening to the IVMB podcast and have tried to make it easy for you to find it. You can listen on our site, www.ivnv.com. You can listen and download in iTunes, or if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, check out the apps that allow you to download or stream our episodes. We are on Stitcher, Pocket Cast, TuneIn, and many more. If you do have an iTunes account, you can help us out by going and giving us a rating and a review. We appreciate your feedback, and thanks for listening to the IVMV Podcast. Let's uh, do the scary stat of the week. And I am totally off on my uh, producer skills tonight. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. The, uh, like I'm a little off on scary season. stat, too. What's that? I said I'm a little off on scary stat, too, so don't feel too bad. <laughs> um, it's, this one isn't uh, terribly original, but it is timely. And we've kind of talked about this before, and I wrote a post on the site about it. 
about the Cubs not losing 100 games, so this is really just an update of that status. Um, they're 59-94 and 94, uh, with nine games left. So they have to win four of nine, which is actually um, would be a drastic improvement on their season <laughs> uh, winning percentage. But the good news is that, and we touched on this a little bit too, they play the Rockies next, which is um, they are one and nine in their last ten, and they're almost as bad as the Cubs. Uh, and um, I'm sorry, they are now worse than the Cubs with all those losses. Uh, then they play the Diamondbacks, which are just two games over 500, so that might be a tough series. And then they finish with the Astros. So of the three series left, uh, um, of the, so six of the nine games, they will be played against teams that are actually worse than they are, which is pretty tough to do. So um, I'm hoping they don't do it, but um, but I guess the scariest that is that you know, we still got nine games left, and they have 94 <laughs> losses. So, um, there's your scary stat. That's scary That's enough. 94, yeah. So there's good news, bad news in this week's. <laughs> I'm predicting they won't hit 100. Really? Yeah, because of those teams are so bad. I think they'll they'll win two of those three series because they only have to get four wins. To avoid think, the hundred. Yeah, I don't think they're going to win two. I think they'll sweep the Astros and take one from the Rockies. <laughs> that's how then they'll do there. it. So that's how they'll get there. I and I really sweep don't the think the Diamondbacks and win one against the Rockies and get <laughs> swept by the Astros, <laughs> or get swept by the Astros and and Rockies and sweep the Diamondbacks. Uh, <laughs> Who knows? I don't but, think the Cubs are going to be sweeping anybody over the next week and a half. <laughs> hey. Uh, all right. Well, let's uh, take a look at this week's uh, photo caption contest again. Uh, today's winner will be awarded a copy of the box set entitled The Essential Games of the Chicago Cubs. And if you uh, didn't win one of these copies, then you can buy one of your own. And I will provide a uh, link in the post uh, for this podcast episode at idv.com. And we'd like to thank A&E Entertainment and MLB Productions. And I don't even have it pulled up, so I guess you're <laughs> in charge. You often don't have it pulled up, huh? I'm, I, I'm really off my game tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, well, the the image is, it's an image of, um, you have Jeff Bellivo. How do you say it? Is, am I saying Bellivo? Does that sound right? Bellivo. Anyway, Bellivo. Yeah. Anyway, he uh, appears to be warming up on the mound. And then in the background you have uh, Anthony Rizzo seems to be experiencing some sort of head scratcher talking to Darwin Barney, whose arms are crossed and kind of has a little bit of a smile on his face. So the uh, first caption comes from Melissa, and it reads, Um, are we still playing? Oh, um, suppose so. He's pitching. <laughs> we have Michael he he wrote wow you really are off you just missed your head with your hat <laughs> yeah, so Rizzo is uh, holding the bill of his hat while scratching his head it looks like alright the next one from also from Michael reads holy crap that hurts why would you smack the button on the top of my hat like that <laughs> He probably should have said Squatchy. Yeah, All if right. he had said Squatchy, he would have improved his That would have been a winner. Chances. Uh, Justin wrote in response to the above post. This is in response to the above. Yeah, man, you should have listened to Bob and taken that thing off. <laughs> <laughs> so Justin gets a, a little bit of a, a nod for... Still no Squatchy, though. Still no Squatchy. Right, yeah. didn't use the term, yeah. We have uh, two from... Uh, actually, three from Nick. Here's the first one. So we just stand here, and after he gives up the maximum number of homers, it'll be our turn to to be at bat, right? <laughs> Next one from Nick reads, Starlin told me this is how the cool kids play the field. <laughs> With his arms crossed. <laughs> Casual. Um, Charles wrote, and this is interrupting the Nick... Uh, trio of com uh, captions but Charles wrote wait you mean to tell me the ladies really do like Michael Bolton <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And then back to Nick. Darbar, I'll trade you Jay Culler and Chris Johnson for Matt Ryan and Megatron. <laughs> Rizzo, I, I don't know. How's uh, CJ2K doing so far this year? Darbar, he's just waiting to break out this week. Now make the deal, Rook, or I'll pants you at your next presser. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of, of uh, pretty Darren accurate. Barney calling anybody Rook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's probably pretty accurate that a lot of the conversation has to do with fantasy football on the field. <laughs> um, we have Bob what, from... I, in, in the uh, Knicks and um, Michaels with the Squatchy, I, I think it's awesome to... Try to visualize Darwin Barney as like a bully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the next caption is from Bob from the UK, and it is Barney. Who's that guy? Rizzo. Search me. Full of damn rookies around here these days. <laughs> Search me. <laughs> I like that. Um, we have one from Michael that reads, um, say Michael as the first couple. Hey, Barney, can I ask you something? As long as it's not about that picture I've got of your mom in my locker. <laughs> um, never mind. <laughs> we have another one from Michael that reads, Seconds before Rizzo smacked that stupid smile after... Uh, let me start that one over. Seconds before Rizzo smacked that stupid smile off Barney's face with his hat. <laughs> um, and then... We have one from DeRose here at the end that is fairly long. <laughs> here we go. Buckle up. Barney, the way he pitches, we don't have to play defense. I wonder if this will hurt my chance at a gold glove. I think travels off. Elivo, okay, you guys, I'm ready to pitch. This guy isn't going to hit, hit this fastball. It's a special pitch of mine. It hangs over the middle of the strike zone. Rizzo. You know, at least in San Diego it was warm. I knew I shouldn't have put fake poo in the Padre statue. It, uh, I've invoked the wrath of God, Barney. And that is where I am going to put my gold glove. It can't be too high or I won't be able to see it. Papa Smurf is going to be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh. <laughs> that's good stuff. Yeah, so that's all of the captions. All right. What do you guys think? Uh, I'm going with Nick. Uh, his third one is the fantasy football reference. Yeah, I'm between between that one and DeRose's, the final one is... DeRose put a lot of thought into that. Yeah. He did. <laughs> I also like the Papa Smurf reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I vote for DeRose. All right, oh I will too. <gasps> he won. He did win. It's been a while. <laughs> and he, uh, he won the DVD box set. So, congratulations. And I'm sure he's in uh, the chat right now. Yeah, by he's not responded to his victory yet, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been as active today. Yeah. Are, is there uh, the... He said yay. <laughs> 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 An understated response. Oh, man. All right. Well, I think uh, that does it for this episode. Uh, as we said, there's a week and a half of the regular season left, and uh, the Cubs will play the Rockies, then they go to Arizona next weekend, and then they host the Astros. It's kind of cool they get to host the Astros in their last series as a, a National League club, I guess. That's that's sure exciting. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> really exciting stuff coming up in the next ten days, guys. <laughs> yep. Next week's episode is gonna be just ridiculous. <laughs> Probably two hours. Yeah. At least. Alright, well thank you for listening and downloading. Thanks for uh, sticking uh, with the Cubs and us in this uh <laughs> very dry period. I don't know. I actually think the off season might be more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be back in a week and until next time, go Cubs. Things are coming out of way.